chemical equilibrium rates and concentrations. So there are a couple of things that can disturb an equilibrium. If we have a look at this chemical formula, let's do uh, 2NO plus O2 forms 2NO2 and the change in H is less than zero. If we look at this, this is a balanced chemical equation. It's at equilibrium conditions and the change in H smaller than zero tells you that energy is being released when this reaction moves from left to right, which means that it's exothermic. The reverse reaction will then be endothermic. So when we look at this reaction, when we have disturbances, we know that according to Le Chatelier's principle, those disturbances will have an effect. So I'm going to summarize six disturbances here and show them to you on the graphs. I'm going to do the concentration versus time graph. Let's just do concentration versus time. And then we're also going to do reaction rate versus time. Now, reaction rate versus time is actually pretty weird because we know that reaction rate already has to do with time. So reaction rate versus time, I want you to imagine this actually means how a reaction progresses and how the rate at which it progresses changes as it continues. So let's do a couple of disturbances. Now, before we have any disturbances, we know that the 2NO on our concentration versus time graph, NO will be up here and O2, and then we see that it will have a slight fall in their concentration. And the reason for that is because as the reaction starts, it, it's at its highest in terms of concentration, but then it gradually decreases. And we don't have any O2 when we start, so the concentration of NO2 will be zero when we start. But then as the reaction progresses, we see a little bit of an increase. And then we know that there will be a plateau at this point. What about reaction rate? Remember here we only have two lines, forward and reverse. And we're going to look at that uh, simultaneously. So when the reaction starts, we know that our forward reaction will meet up with our reverse reaction to reach a point of equilibrium. Now, at this point, let's have a disturbance occur, and that disturbance is an increase in the pressure. Because I have two moles of NO and one mole of O2, I have three moles on the left-hand side, and I only have two moles on the right-hand side. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will favor the reaction that leads to a decrease in pressure. In this case, a decrease in pressure is going to be achieved when the forward reaction is favored because two moles is less than three moles. So when the forward reaction is favored, we know that we will see that the NO will decrease and the O2 and the 2NO2 will increase. But remember, when we have that sharp increase in pressure, we see that there's a spike that occurs for the NO, there's a spike that occurs for the O2, and a spike that occurs for the NO2. And now we've already determined that the forward reaction is favored. And the reaction that is favored, the reactants will decrease gradually for that one. So in this case, we'll see that our NO will decrease gradually, our O2 will decrease gradually, and we see that our NO2 will increase gradually. Now, the important part for us here is to see that in our concentration versus time graph, the lines never meet up. And here's a little trick that I want to teach you. How do we now go and draw reaction rate? So what I do is I figure out which reaction will be favored. And in this case, you all see it's the forward reaction that's going to be favored. Therefore, when I have my spike, I know that my forward reaction must have a higher point than my reverse reaction. So I'm going to continue with a dotted line. There's my spike. My forward reaction is going to spike. My reverse reaction is going to spike, but it's a little bit lower. And the reason why it's a little bit lower is because I know that my forward reaction must gradually decrease and my reverse reaction gradually increase until they can meet up again. So we see with an increase in pressure, the system will favor a decrease in pressure 
which means that the forward reaction is favored. And this is the way we will indicate it on our concentration versus time graph and our reaction rate versus time graph. What about if we had a decrease in pressure as our disturbance? The system will go and favor the reaction that leads to an increase in pressure, which means that now the reverse reaction is going to be favored. The moment we have a decrease in pressure, all the gases will experience a decrease in pressure, which means that all three of them will fall immediately. Now, if the reverse reaction is going to be favored, we know that there must be a gradual decrease in our product and a gradual increase in our reactants. So I'm going to have a gradual decrease in my product and a gradual increase in my reactants. As far as my reaction rate graph is concerned, remember that I'm going to experience a sharp decrease in pressure. That will be for the forward and the reverse reaction. So the dotted line and the normal uh, line both go down sharply. But which one will be higher? The one that needs to go through a gradual decrease. And because the reverse reaction is favored, this means that the solid line will be higher up than the dotted line. And therefore, we will see a gradual decrease in our reverse reaction and a gradual increase in our forward reaction.